you want? Are you gonna go over there and snore? Would you good dog? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> I am dog sitting the wonderful old lady that is Minnie this week. So I'm filming a bunch of stuff at my parents' house, which is why the setup is a little bit weird. And no, don't lick my face. I'm a little bit backlit. But it does mean you get dog content. I mean, who doesn't want more content of this little face? Digital face. We going, she's going. So yes, if you hear this noise, that's the dog walking around on a hardwood floor and possibly snoring later, we'll see. Previously on Animorphs. I'm a hawk. Could it be plot? These books could be slapstick, I swear. Which brings us to here, book four, The Message. This is a book I think I've read before because me picking up a book with dolphins on the cover seems about right. It is a truth universally acknowledged that this is one of the best Animorphs covers. Yes, yes, standard opening, can't tell you my name, blah, 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 but it's Cassie's opening, yes. However, that does mean that book five is probably from Marco's perspective and need I remind you, we are team Marco sucks here on this channel. The book opens with Cassie in her parents' barn, which is where they keep the rescue animals, and she's getting ready to turn into a squirrel. Cassie reminds us that part of the difficulty with morphing is controlling the animal brain, and she's pretty sure that's gonna be quite difficult with the squirrel. Why is Cassie in the barn? Well, there are two reasons. One, something keeps getting into the barn and eating the animals. One duck has already perished. Two, she keeps having really terrible dreams. Ominous pulls. Some morphs are easy, some are terrifying. When I was a horse, that was cool. When I had to become a trout, well, that was a little more weird. The whole time I just kept thinking how someone could fry me and serve me with tartar sauce. I mean, we've all been there. We get a huge amount of detail as to how it feels like morphing into an animal with loads of detail, including like the order things happen, how weird it feels, all that jazz, because Cassie is great and she's giving us the information we desire. Then we deal with squirrel brain. Predators, they were everywhere. I was surrounded, predators. Perhaps it would have been better to morph outside the barn that was full of predators. Cassie panics in squirrel form for a while. Tobias turns up, apparently not aware that Cassie is a squirrel. You kind of think they probably ought to enact some kind of rule where they telepathy any room with animals in that they enter just in case it's one of them. You'd think they'd have set that in place by now. Right off the bat, we've solved the mystery of the bird killer. It's a local fox. Cassie makes herself known to Tobias. Her excuse is that she was getting the hang of squirrel brains so she couldn't telepathy him. What's his excuse? Cassie, why are you out here at midnight turning into a squirrel? I mean, we've all asked our friends awkward personal questions like that. We get a nice bit of description about Cassie. Mostly, if you want to know what I look like, picture a girl in overalls and leather work gloves biting her lip as she concentrates on trying to force a pill down the throat of a badger. The all-American girl. Oh, we also have some, oh, Jake, isn't he handsome and nice moments, which I think I'm just gonna have to get on board with, otherwise I'm just gonna be very frustrated for the rest of these books. Cassie fast morphs back from squirrel to person because her dad's coming uh, and he manages to just miss seeing her enormous squirrel tail shrink back into her body. The dog is snoring. Thank you, Minnie. And it, she tells Tobias after his dad's gone that she's been having really terrible dreams about someone calling to her from the sea. And Tobias says, oh, I've been having the same dreams. Ominous balls. You are just gonna have to put up with dog snoring for the rest of this video. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so the animals meet up again. No, I haven't had any weird dreams about the sea, Marco said. I've had weird dreams about my sheets trying to strangle me. I've had weird dreams about falling from way up high. And when I finally land, I'm in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood talking to King Friday. I've had weird dreams about that woman on Baywatch. Well, hmm, that does kind of involve the ocean, I guess. While they hang out in Rachel's apparently immaculate room, Cassie remarks on how much things have changed for them. So they've got to a point where they're checking behind them all the time to see if they're being followed. And I hadn't realized that the trauma processing and the kind of bad things that happened to them came so early in this book. So we're only on book four. We have to enjoy Cassie telling us about how cute Jake is. Uh, and also how stupid Marco is. I much more enjoyed the second half of that. They head downstairs to watch a video cassette Jake has taped of the news the night before. Some man has found a piece of something on the beach that has what Jake has determined is Andalite writing on it. How does Jake know what Andalite writing looks like? I'm glad you asked. He went onto the Andalite ship to grab the cube in book one and he saw some Andalite writing then. So that makes sense. Cassie faints and hears a voice calling to her from the sea again. Is it possible this is an Andalite? Yes, yes it is. Oh my goodness, it takes them so long to work it out. Tobias and Cassie are the only ones who experience this weird fainting moment because Cassie is the best at morphing and Tobias is constantly in bird morph, so they're kind of more attuned to it, I guess. It's like pulling teeth. 
but they do come to the conclusion that there is an andalite under the fracking ocean. Even Marco the Maudlin decides to help, and it's time for another Animorphs rescue mission. But the Animorphs weren't the only ones to notice the news clip, and when they get to the beach, there's a group from the Sharing that are there. You remember the Sharing? Evil Yik cult? Yeah, 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 you remember them. We get some added information. As impossible as it may seem, some humans actually decide to become hosts for the Yerks. The Yerks like it that way. It's easier for them to have a voluntary host instead of a host that resists their control. Still not clear on what the Yerks want. Still, still don't know. Why, why are they taking over people? Questions, questions. Jake's brother Tom's with them, just a reminder that he is a controller. The Animorphs, despite being able to change their shape, are not very good at hiding, so they get spotted in the sand dunes, and this chapter ends with someone shooting at Cassie. Their only option is to run into the sea and morph into fish. The issue being, the only fish they have is the trout from the previous book, which is a freshwater fish. They escape the sharing crowd, realising that the human tracks that go into the water don't come out again, and are beginning to slightly suspect that their theory about the Andalite bandits may not be 100% accurate. Things go back to normal for a bit because they're teenagers and they have to live their lives, so Cassie's helping out in her parents' barn, and who should turn up but Jake? But she's covered in poop! The trials of young love. Jake points out that the rest of them are waiting on her to decide what to do about the dream because she's the one getting it, and she's the one who'll have to go. Tobias is getting the dream too, but he can't swim, so I guess he's out of the question for this one. You know, because he's a hawk. They then realise that they're going to need another more useful morph if they're going to go into the ocean and actually survive. Thankfully the local zoo, which we've seen in previous books, has sea lions and dolphins! Who saw that coming? Jake leaves Cassie to decide whether it's actually ethical to morph into a creature as intelligent as a dolphin. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to ease up on the Marco sucks stuff, because Cassie explains what's going on with Marco and it sounds like he's having kind of a hard time, but he still sucks, and he's still a sexist, but maybe he's not the worst all of the time? I don't... Mm. A small pause by the dolphin pool to consider the ethics of morphing because while they aren't taking over a living animal, they are taking over an animal because they have to take over the brain. Uh, it's very complicated and eventually they sort of go like, well, we've got to go rescue this guy, so let's not think too hard about this. Give me that dolphin DNA. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Tobias has not only accepted his hawk nature, but he's also accepted that he's going to be next to useless on this mission, so his job is to be timekeeper. It's kind of like when you get that one person on your group project that you're just like, why are you here? They ask Cassie to do the more first because she's the best morpher, but she's pretty humble about it. I nodded, sure. For some reason, everyone has decided that I'm the best morpher. I think it's mostly silly. We can all morph fine. No, Cassie, you're the best. Just accept the praise. Cassie becomes a dolphin, which is pretty much just a description of what happens on the cover. The dolphin mind isn't as primitive as some of the other minds we've had, and it basically just wants to play. This is possibly the first time, with the exception of a couple of other moments, that we really get the joy of morphing, uh, and I'm even willing to put up with Marco in it, because it's just so lovely to see them happy. There are adventures in echolocation, until Cassie realises that the thing she is echolocating is in fact a shark. Oh no, the sharks are attacking a whale. Animals to the rescue. Unlike animal documentary makers, the animals are clearly not averse to interfering with nature. There's a big tonal shift and Cassie realises that they really might die. And then Marco has his tail bitten off. Not good. Oh, I'm gonna have to care about Marco. No. Morphing uses DNA, right? The basic pattern of the animal. Marco morphs back to human. I don't think the injury will affect him because it doesn't affect his human DNA. Then, as soon as he can, he morphs back into dolphin. The dolphin body was injured, but the dolphin DNA should be the same. He should be a healthy, normal dolphin again. Basic lessons in DNA. Oh, of course, Marco can't swim. Oh boy. Then they start to get a little bit weird. The whale emerges and thanks them with its whale mind. The whale also imparts some wisdom as to where the thing they are looking for might be. And in the meantime, Marco has healed himself through what I'm going to call the Animorphs Reset Button. Having achieved bugger all, they head back. Cassie goes around to Marco's house to check on him after he almost died. Marco reveals that while he does joke about everything, he is scared of things, especially Vista 3. So I was afraid yesterday, bet on it, I was scared plenty. It was like, man, it's not bad enough we have to fight hawk and Taxons and Vista 3, we also have to fight sharks. Sharks? It's a little bit concerning that people are suddenly having a real interest in that stretch of ocean that the thing might be in. Psst, it's definitely the controllers looking for the Andalite. The animals all meet up again to summarise what they know. Maybe an Andalite is missing. The whale told them where to find it. Have our lives gotten really weird, or is it just me? Tobias asked. No, they're pretty weird. Oh, you'll have to tolerate it. This is what the sunlight does. Time for another Animorphs ingenious scheme. Rachel stood up. She'd been lounging on the bed. We hop a ride on a ship. First we morph into something like a seagull. Marco groaned. I hate plans that begin with the words, first we morph. Those are the books, Marco. 
We morph into seagulls, I said, picking up the plan we'd worked out. Then we fly out into the shipping channel. We land on a tanker or a container ship or something that's going in the right direction. We morph back to human. Rest up. Let the ship get us closer. Then jump over the side, morph to dolphin, and go the rest of the way. Like, it's not a terrible plan. It's not great. But it's not as bad as let's pretend to be her cat. They do the turn into seagulls and then suddenly are obsessed with food. Hard relate. They land on a container ship, do some maths, work out how long they need to wait based on where the ship's go. It's, you don't care. No, I didn't care. There's a bit of a snafu where Marco can't swim, so how are they going to get him from the boat into the water? But in the end, they sort of yeet his half dolphin form off the edge of the boat and into the water. That was entertaining. But when they surface to get some air before diving deeper into the ocean, they realise that there's a strange helicopter circling this bit of the ocean. The Yerks are here. Swim, 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 swim. It was round, as round as a plate, a very large plate. From one side to the other, the diameter must have been half a mile. It was covered by a transparent dome, clear glass, or whatever it is the Andalites use for glass. And within the dome, protected from the crushing force of the water, was what looked very much like a park. A park in a plastic dome at the bottom of the ocean. They get knocked unconscious by whatever it is lives in the dome, which is an antelite armed with a dragon beam who very clearly mistrusts these kids. In a great moment of conflict management, Jake immediately tells the antelite that his brother is dead, his brother the prince that we met in book one. Great job, Jake. Upset the person holding the gun. He's a young antelite who wasn't allowed to go into battle and now his dome is stuck under the sea. The antelite tells him his name. I am Axmili Escaruth. It's Phil. Marco immediately shorts it to Axe, which is, yes, a helpful nickname, but also I feel like you should maybe make an effort to pronounce his name. When people tell you people's names, they should either get to choose their own nickname or you should make an effort. Who is your prince? One by one, we looked at Jake. Oh, give me a break, Jake said. I'm not anyone's prince. But the Andalite had stepped forward. He bowed his head and lowered his tail. I will fight for you, Prince Jake until I can return to my cousins. Great, the doofus is prince now. Hold your horses and your other morphs. We're about to find out what the Yerks do. The usual Yerk pattern. Once a planet is under their control, they alter it to suit their own desires. They will leave enough plant and animal species to keep the host bodies fed, humans in the case of Earth, and the rest they eliminate. They eliminate them. They will make Earth as much like the Yerk home world as possible. They will destroy most of the plants and all of the animal species, except those they eat. So why were there bird watchers? so many more questions. We also learn that it'll be probably about two years before the Andalites arrive to help, so it's five kids and one young Andalite against the world. And space. They need to go, partly because they need to go and process the fact that they are now in charge of saving the world, but also because some sonar's happening, it's becoming clear that the Yicks are very, very close. But it's okay, Axe has picked up a water morph from this planet. It's right, oh, it's a shark? The natural predator of the dolphin? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, good choice, Axe, Marco said. You morphed a shark. Is it wrong? The Andalite wondered. Your species and ours are mortal enemies, I explained. Oh, I have a lot to learn about Earth, foreshadowing for the next few books, just saying. Even though hawk Bajir don't swim, Taxons, who the Yicks have also enslaved, do, uh, and they're coming, the answer was obvious. The Taxons, ten foot long centipedes bristling with dozens of pairs of sharp needle legs, were racing after us and they were very fast in the water. So they fight the Texans, who are apparently not very solid. They're basically described as being like wet paper bags once you thwack them with a dolphin. Also, apparently Axe has the power to know how much time has passed. In human time, which still confuses me, because our time is based around our sun, so is the Andalite sun just going at the same time? Or is it like a weird translation effect where it auto-translates time? Something else is now attacking. It's a Margaret which is a big thing from an alien moon that swims around going whoomp, 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 except it isn't a Margaret. It's Visser 3. He really doesn't know how to delegate. He's really hands-on leadership. There's no way they can escape. He's going way too fast. Cassie basically gives in to the jaws of death at one point. But in a dramatic moment, akin to the ending of The Lord of the Rings, the whales have come. I had the feeling, and that's all it was, a feeling, that in some way the sea itself had called him the whale to respond to the presence of an abomination. Awa has heard you. We did it. We saved the Andalite, and we got out alive. Barely, I said. Like every book. Every book you barely get out alive. How are you not expecting this by now? In order to disguise himself, Axe acquires the DNA of the four human children uh, and creates like an amalgamation of all of them that is his human morph. Which does mean, imply that you can combine morphs. So does that mean they can combine like a tiger and a dolphin? What would that be? I'm excited. I hope they play with that later. To end the book on a high note, after quite a lot of bad things happen, 
Cassie gets in the tank and swims with the dolphins as another dolphin. They all dance together, like it's the end of a Disney film. And that's the end, the end of book four. Can you believe it? We're nearly at the end of the first kind of cycle of animals. It's so exciting. Let's go through the morphs. We have, oh, not very many. Hawk, squirrel, dolphin, seagulls, and human. I may have missed one. Thank you so much for sticking around for this video, despite audio, dog, and sunlight issues. Uh, I really wanted to get this out today, so it meant filming it and editing it in one day, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked it and you want to join me in my journey of reading all of the animals books and all my other bookish videos, you can subscribe, you can like this video, you can share it, you can follow me on all of my socials, and I will see you in the next one.